G'day mate and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, JD. Now, in the last episode we covered the hatchery fairly quickly and we, we covered the basics of how it worked. This episode we're going to move along still with the hatchery and we're going to do a couple of other important things. So, first things first, uh, first things first we're going to turn that mode back on. Um, Our hatch is going to give us not quite an unlimited supply of coal, but a, but a very large supply of coal, which means we're a lot more flexible when it comes to power, um, a lot more flexible. So I want to, first off, I want to try and incubate the, the, the eggs that we've got, because um, our hatch is going to do a couple of things for us. One, they're going to provide us coal. Two, they're going to provide us lime from any hatch. Uh, any eggs that have hatched and I just need to find an egg here so we got eggshell right here um, which can be crushed to give us lime lime is one of those items that you will need eventually um, to create steel and as you can see for the whole game so far 42 cycles and just natural lime from eggs naturally being laid and hatching um, we've we've only got 3.7 kilos. Look, there's another hatch that got loose. You, go away. So, we don't have a lot of eggshell to turn in line. We want to up that production because eventually, late game, you're going to need steel, and the sooner you start working on it, the better. All right. So, we're going to go back into our food, and we're going to put in an incubator. Now, this does require refined metals. Um, you could either smash them with rock granulator. Maybe you've been lucky and had a couple of smooth hatches and they've given you refined metal. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can get them. Uh, but for the moment, we're just going to put in an incubator up here. And I did pick gold um, because it has that increase to decor, but more importantly, the increase to the overheat temperature. So the overheat temperature of this is now 140 degrees. Um, base value of plus 363.2 degrees okay so there's a small problem with with this particular update um but we can now say hey you permanently incubate stone uh normal hatchlings and we can say this one we want to deliver hatches and stone and hatchlings into here as you can see we're already We've tied up an egg, we're going to bring it up here, and we're going to put it in the incubator. Now, the incubator requires power. Um, as you can see, our egg is still has the base rate of 5%. So, we need to do something about power. Now, our current power circuit has not a lot being used currently, but it has a high potential current on it. And that's really the thing that could be worrying. Um, and we're going to flood this if we're not careful. Hang on. We'll just dig that out a little bit. And that out a little bit, drop the water level. Always something you want to keep an eye on. Um, yeah, we um, we have a lot more coal now, and therefore we can very, very easily dump down another coal generator out of gold amalgam to have that extra 50% overheat uh, temperature. Uh, do I have enough room there? Not really. So I'm going to build a little landing spot for it. Put some tiles in. I will actually deconstruct uh, a couple of those tiles because this will pump out carbon dioxide. Pump out a couple of tiles there. We're going to use airflow tiles there. Airflow tiles there. We're going to put in our power with our coal generator out of gold right there. Again, I really recommend a smart battery, um, just so we can use the automation wire, hook the two together and make sure this one doesn't waste, doesn't waste power by trying to produce power with, with that power having nowhere to go. We're then going to hook up our power wire from there to there. Okay. Um, and after a duplicate comes and feeds this with coal, we should be good. Now, a couple of other things I want to actually also do. So, in our 
automation. We've also now got access to a critter sensor. So a critter sensor becomes active or standby depending on the number of eggs and critters in a room. So I want to put a critter sensor right there. Uh, where'd you go? Critter sensor. Right there. Uh, now I want to set you to one critter. So when it's one critter in this room, it'll become active. Now I also want to do a couple of other changes to that. I want to deconstruct these two tiles and I want to put in a mechanized airlock sideways with a normal door there and a normal tile there. Now if we go back to our room overlay, we can see this has now become a self-contained room. And if I take my automation wire and hook it from there to there, it means as long as this is inactive, i.e. there are no critters in the room, this door will remain closed. All right. When it becomes active, this door will open. Um, as we already know, having an open door doesn't change a room's uh, size. So we want that door to just pop open just for a moment whilst there's an extra critter in there. Uh, at the same time, we also need a food a critter drop off because we need somewhere to drop these critters off when they're done. Pop that right there and we want to say, hey you, hatchlings. I want you to now drop all the hatchlings up here. And if we very quickly try to find a hatchling. You, it's a hatch. Hatch, 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 hatch. They've all grown up on me. Yeah, they've all grown up on me. I don't see any hatchlings anymore. So we'll move the priority up on this so as you can see uh where are we now we want to click on the actual egg it now has an incubation rate of five still and when a duplicate comes over here mainly the actual ranching dupe you can see they're pathing up there right now they're gonna sing the egg a lullaby and of course as their ranching ability goes up these progress bars become a lot faster and we go incubation period from 5% to a new change per cycle of 20% or 25% so in what four cycles every fourth cycle we're going to have a new egg pop out now there are a couple of other automation tricks we can do um, there's a small flaw in this machine, I guess is one way of putting it, that if I go here right now and disconnect the power, it is still has that rate of 25%. So again, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to go to power, put in one of these power shutoffs that we sort of never, ever, ever really use. Um, Power. We're going to throw a power shut off in here and run a wire straight through there. Except again, automation wise, I'm going to put in. Well, look, there's many different ways to do this. Um, there's a couple of different ways. So we can either put in a clock sensor and hook that to there and say, hey, you're only going to be active for that part of the day. And hopefully, our ranch will get up here, sing his lullaby whilst it's powered, whilst it's up and running during that small period of the day. The other option I can do, I'm just going to deconstruct those and have that crap fall out of the way. Um, which, in our case, because we're in a super low traffic area, is probably going to be the better option for us. Deconstruct those again is again under our automation we have a weight plate which we do have access to um, just confirming really quickly and i'm going to set that to active if so 
So, active if below. 25 kilos, I think. And then if we hook up a little bit of wire here. So at the moment you can see it's off. And we actually want it to stay off. Again, if we go to our automation, we can do a filter gate. So this enters standby if the system connected to its input is also on standby. So we want to put in, and a buffer gate is the exact opposite. Becomes active if the system connected to its input is active, stays active for a short amount of time if the input enters standby. So we want to come here and we want to say, hey, you buffer gate, if a duplicate comes and stands here, we want you to stay active for 30 seconds. That should be long enough for them to sing a lullaby. Then we want to go back to automation. We want to go to a filter gate. And I want to put two there like that. And we can go to this filter gate and set this to 200 seconds. And set this one to 200 seconds as well. So it means when a duplicate comes and stands on this, for the next... 400 seconds or so um, it's going to be idle or well, actually do we even need to turn it back on I don't think we do um, you know what we'll find out when this egg hatches so that's step number one have somewhere for our um, our eggs to go that they can be incubated we're going to drop off our hatchlings here who can walk across to there. When they walk across to there, there this door is going to open it. It's going to drop them down into our main hatchery. It stops the duplicate having to basically run them all the way down here. Um, we've just automated the process very, very quickly and very, very you know, efficiently, hopefully. Um, next thing I want to set up. Oh, there's a new hatch. So next thing I want to set up requires a little bit of um, a little bit of space. Space could be our, our biggest problem because I don't want to deal with this chlorine just yet. Uh, you know what? Let's put it on this side. So. I want a ladder to get us up. Uh, we then want at least three tiles high so our hatches can't jump out. Uh, yeah, that should do us. Uh, nope, I'm going to need a bit more room at the top. Thanks, Sand. Okay, a lot more room at the top. I want to put in some mesh tiles and food. I want to create a drop off right there. I want you for hatches only. So I want hatches to come up to this room. All right, at a, we'll set this one for a priority six. And we already know previously that our hatch is now cramped and they're overpopulated and they're grum and they're all just generally grumpy. This is because we have too many in this room. Um, I wanted to max out the size of the room because at maximum size, and it's not about how much width they have to run around or even, I, I, I even set up a method in the past where they had doors they could jump on, hoping to have a larger space between one and the next. Um, the idea this time around, well, what actually happens is, yeah, it doesn't matter how much space they have between one hatch and the next, you could have it this in a in a 96 tile long um, column, straight up, and they have one tile to run around in the bottom. That's perfectly fine. They're, they're perfectly happy with that. Um, but we now know from 96 tiles, the maximum amount of um, hatches we can have is seven. So oh, eight. So I'm actually going to set this to seven. So auto wrangle seven critters. Okay. The only thing we have delivered down here is hatches. 
hatchlings will get delivered up here and all will get dropped back in. Um, but hatches can also get delivered across to here. So hopefully our rancher will start taking our hatches and shoving them over in this little room over here. If they ever finish doing what they're doing. Uh, automation again. I want to hook up, hook up an automation wire to a clock sensor. And because that's active, all the doors open. I want to have you not active for a short period of the day. I want all these doors to shut. Just, just for a little section of the day. Oh, look, we've got another hatch. Uh, capture critters. Priority 9. Get back here. Go. How far you got? Another cycle in a bit. Come on, rancher. I really need a second rancher. Um, jobs. Jobs. Uh, I can get farming to come across and help out the rancher for the moment. They can go back to farming afterwards. Because the only thing their job is to do at the moment is maintain this one. No, it's night time. Everybody's going to bed. Excellent. Uh, we did get a level up. And storage is filling up slowly. Oh, ranch is back up here. Oh, there we go. We've got one captured. Two captured. And we're now seven of nine. Eight of seven. And as you can see, we're going to take them over here. We're going to release them over here. And they can live a happy life over here. Except um, we're not going to let them live a happy life. We really want that meat. Um, now I can just pick a hatch and say attack. And somebody will come over here with their blaster gun. And zap him. But as you can see, my duplicate took damage. Um, was it you? Yep. They took two help, two hit points worth of... Disable building. Oh, they took two hit points worth of damage. I don't want them to take two hit points worth of damage. I would really like to find... Oh, and, and my hatch ate my hatch. Yeah, we went from 3,200 calories worth of meat down to... 2,478 calories. We've got coal as, uh, as an offshoot, but I would much prefer to have all the meat to myself. So what I actually want to do is I want to come up here and I want to flood this area at the bottom. Um, quite simply, I, 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 I want to drown the hatches. So I think we're going to have to... No, it should be enough. We should be able to just fill it to this level. Um, I do want the dupes to come down here and sweep this crap. Mm, plumbing. Bottle of MTR. Let's put a few across there. Because we want to fill this area up with water as fast as we can. We can now see that these hatches are cramped. Why are you cramped now? They're groomed, they're happy, they're tamed. Okay, maybe seven's too much. We'll go down to six. Ah, oh, it's because these eggs are in here. So if I go to room overlay, we can see critters nine. So there's actually nine in this room because there's two eggs. So, you want to get the eggs out of there as fast as possible and into an incubator. Um, your base may vary. You may need a couple of incubators. Um, who knows? Uh, we're, we're, we're now not incubating. Oh, they want to fix it mess up there. Copy settings to those two. Okay. 
we're gonna have to look at a different way of setting this up then. Uh, okay, so if I deconstruct. Ooh. Hang on, let's deconstruct that bag. Are you still incubating at... So you're still getting your five incubation. Okay. What happens if I do... That... With our... Weight plate. Set you to... If above... 30 kilos. Don't you dare dupe. No, that'll open the door. I want to open the door. I want to do the exact opposite. I want to... Bring that to there. Bring that to there. Nope. Oh. Okay, automation. I want a buffer gate. Automation. Buffer gate. So give me 30 seconds. Then a not gate. No, not a not gate. A filter gate. Okay, so we're going to set that to 30 seconds. And I'm going to set that to 200 seconds. Deconstruct, deconstruct, because they've all got crap sitting on them. Uh, automation, weight plate right there. Set that back to active if above 20 kilos. So we're now back over uh, Copy settings into there. And we're going to deconstruct that and make it one tile higher. Just in case. Oh, it didn't actually copy the settings. It didn't enable the auto bottle. There we go. Yet another bug. another tied up patch. Alright, egg, lullaby, 74%, so it'll be done this cycle. We're, we're still delivering hatches across. There's another hatch. There we go, now that's some water production. Now, honestly, this is entirely up to you. You could just come down here um, and pop in a, um, okay, that didn't work. Oops. Um, bring your main pipeline up here and just drip the water out off your pump. Um, we've now got an egg up here because why not? So we're down to seven critters. There's probably still... Nope, they're tame, they're groomed, they're happy. Uh, their reproduction rate's now 900%. As you can see, our reproduction's 17% per hatch, which means, what's that? Five, six cycles, roughly, every six cycles. We're gonna have a new... We're gonna have each one of these guys lay a new hatch. And as we've got seven or eight in the room, it means every single cycle, we're gonna have another new baby hatch which is really going to add up fast. Uh, come on, egg. Well, it's just sitting around waiting for an egg, egg to hatch. Nothing worse. Um, that and, and bottles of water to be delivered, actually. Let's just... Uh, water... Oops. 
water, liquid, mass, uh, let's just do 1,000 kilograms, temperature, 320 Kelvin, I think is about, about right. 30 odd degrees. Okay, maybe it's a bit high. 270. Oh, that says too low. Uh, 300. Let's just do 300. Paint. Paint. Um, it will take a long time to fill this up. But as you can see, my hatches are starting to drown. And we want to now switch that. No, we want to paint in just a bit more water. We just, like, just, just, just a bit above ground level we want whoever's up here to start drowning okay and then we want to switch the gates so for just a little period of the day we want the gates to shut when the gates shut they're going to force the water level up and this hatch in here should get in trouble Drowning, 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 drowning. Can't breathe in liquid. And eventually, eventually he will die off. Not tonight it seems. It's going to be a tomorrow night situation. Because right, the water level is going to go back down. We can put in a ladder here. So our duplicates can get down to this level. Sweep up the meat. Go barbecue the meat. And turn it into beautiful, lovely food. And we have just automated, so we just picked up four tons worth of meat. Now, there is obviously better ways to do this. You can, um, well, straight away I could move these tiles down one tile. Because um, the hatches really don't have anywhere to go. So we might actually try that. Uh, whilst we wait for our egg to hatch. Deconstruct those. to us if we swap that around water level still goes up he still drowns beautiful so that's the exact thing we want and you just want just just for a little bit at night time um for the clock sensor to go off and, and and raise the water level up and and clear off the excess so we've got our little hatchling now what has this done Really? Back over there. Nope. Okay, so you've got power. Unfortunately, they've left materials on here, so this will end up failing eventually. Um, okay, so if I deconstruct that door. Let's go back into our doors. Put down one of those there. Put down automation. And what we'll do is we'll put in a not gate. He's now stuck. Okay. Deconstruct. Give him a four tile to stand on. Because I don't want him to fall. Put that there, automation wire, bring that down another tile. Right. Close that back up. There we go. Okay. So it doesn't go through sideways doors, doors only goes through upright doors. We fixed the problem. Um, so we've now got him falling in. You haven't. You have been lullabied. We've now opened that door, which is, means we're no longer 
consuming power from this power network. So if we go to here, we can see we're consuming exactly zero watts because um, this uses 240 watts a day, which really, really adds up. Uh, so it's been lullabied, incubation rates 400%. It has almost finished incubating already. And it means tomorrow somebody should come up here and release him. And yeah, as you can see, we've got far too much weight on there already. We need to find something to do with that material. First thing I want to suggest is, as soon as you have opened this access to this and provided there's no hatches anywhere around the area, um, set that to continuous. Um, because you'll need that line. And as you can see, very, very quickly, we've vastly increased our eggshell uh, amount, along with... We've got 14 kilos of meat already, or 14,000 calories worth of meat. Um, I'd like to make barbecue, but barbecue requires pinch pepper, which we still don't have any of, um, but we will get eventually. Um, so we're going to release you. We're going to dump you there. And you still don't have a floor. And you won't have a floor till this crap's cleaned up. Yeah. This weight plate is not an ideal system, but, you know, it's up to you guys. You can either cheat the system a little bit and save a little bit of power, um, or you can leave it as is and, and, and run the risk of, well, not run the risk, you will just use more power. Um, overlay, so we still have nine critters in here. Oh yeah, because we've now got a stone hatchet down there. So, I don't have an option to actually... The way these work is you can... I, I, I only continuous for one single type of egg. Um, if I wanted to do two... Move, Draco. Thank you. If I want to do two different egg types, I would have to put in a second incubator right there. Set you to stone hatch incubate continuous and hook that power wire up to there um, as I said these things do use 240 watts per you know per second per whatever um, which really does add up over time you'll see we'll, we'll end up chewing quite a bit of coal out of there our coal is still going up we still do have a net gain of coal um, and of lime and of meat on the flip side we are also essentially using up some sedimentary rock for that for those increases so i'm going to leave that here um this is our upgraded hatchery hatch farm hatch whatever you want to call it um which automatically kills off our excess which gives us lots and lots of excess food you will oh and our oxygen seems to have gone off okay Maybe that did need to be enabled. Um, in saying that, our oxygen down here is still fine because all this is just free, unlimited, polluted oxygen for the cost of a little bit of sand, which is not an unlimited material, but there is an unlimited amount when we get to space. Um, so yeah, one thing I, I, I didn't mention is you're probably going to want to put some airflow tiles under here. Oh, that's really... We've got a shine bug. Yeah, we managed to get some shine bugs stuck in here. So yeah, again, we, you know, it should be self-explanatory by now, but you are going to need to put in some sort of airflow tiles around the place to make sure you have airflow in and out, out of your base everywhere required. Our hatches are over here dying. Our egg can't drown. That's the important thing. It can be carted up here and put into the incubator once it finishes its automation cycle. And Well, once somebody clears this crap off. Um, okay, that obviously wasn't long enough to drown our hatches. So we're just going to give it a little bit of a longer cycle. Quarter of a cycle. Okay. 
around about a quarter of a cycle. So if you start about there, oops, other way around. There you go. So just before bed, we'll, we'll drown all the hatches, um, which means in the morning somebody should be able to come along, pick up all the hatches, shove them over into our meat tray, um, and 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 save us some meat for for some tasty meals later on. Anyway. As I said, I'm going to try and leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, next episode, we're probably going to have to look at the shine bugs because the shine bugs can be very, very handy moving forth. Um, at the same time, we also need to look at something to do with food because we're sort of at the point where we start risking having too much food go too bad too often. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed this slightly longer episode, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.